Sometimes we see and hear things that can have lasting effects on us, emotionally and physically. Today on our lounge, the path to healing may be hard, but you aren't alone. My mother-in-law has pulled the last straw by manipulating her own daughter and son. My, 20 male, husband and I, 20 female, are currently living with his parents because I lost my last job due to inflation. He is an essential worker, so his job is fine, but he's not making as much as he used to. I have been working some small jobs because there is barely anywhere hiring in the country I live in. Regardless, I am working. My mother-in-law, 55 female, and my father-in-law, 50, have both agreed we do not need to pay rent as long as we are working and help around the house. My husband and I have had no issue with this whatsoever and have helped them anytime we can. However, this entire time, my mother-in-law has been so hateful towards me and my husband. She talks behind my back, calling me hateful names and saying such hurtful things about me especially. She thinks I have made my husband hate her even though she calls him a horrible son in almost every name in the book. The only way I know about this is because my sister-in-law, 14 female, has been kind enough to let me know what's going on behind my back. It crushed me when I found out she's been talking about me behind my back and spreading false information about me to anyone and everyone for almost an entire year now. I have found myself falling into a deep depression recently because when I tell you these hateful words from her are constant, it is an every day, almost every hour occurrence. But my last straw was last night. When my husband and I came home from a weekend camping trip, I found out that my mother-in-law said so much false and hurtful things about me specifically. I finally put my foot down and told my husband to confront her because she doesn't talk to me at all. She denies and plays off everything as if she hasn't said anything bad about me or my husband. My husband called her last night and confronted her about what she had said. She denied it for so long until she finally broke and told him everything she said about me. She then hung up. Later on that night, my father-in-law asked my husband to talk to him and go for a ride with him. My husband told me everything about how his father suggests I'd be the one to move out and my husband stay because his wife is unhappy with me being there. My husband and I cried all night because of how insane this has been. No matter how many times I try to work it out with her, she refuses to talk about it. My last straw was when later on that night, I heard her whisper yelling at my sister-in-law. I heard her crying and I checked on her to make sure she's okay. She told my husband and I that her mom came in there and told her that everything was her fault. My mother-in-law said that my husband and I hate her because she told us what her mom said about us. She also said that she broke her trust and is a bad daughter. We reassured her that we don't hate her, that and our love for her is entirely unconditional and that she didn't do anything wrong. She is not a bad daughter at all. After we calmed her down, we found my mother-in-law with her ear to the door. My husband kept me from saying anything because our solution to this has been us ignoring her since she loves attention. Immediately after that, I told my husband that we needed to make a decision about whether or not she will be in our lives in the future. In the end, we agreed that we were going to go no contact with her. She will never meet our kids. Our kids will never know their grandparents on his side. I haven't even said half of the insane things that she has done before. Keep in mind that we buy our own groceries, clothes, pay our own bills, and my husband and I are for the most part, very normal people. Side note, we do not live with my parents because they simply do not have the space. For the time that we are here, I would love some advice from people who have experienced similar things because my husband and I are having a very hard time dealing with this. I will absolutely make other posts about this crazy millions of other things this woman has done. She is a textbook definition of a psychopath, manipulator, and a narcissist. Again, any help and advice would be much appreciated by my husband and I. Thank you for reading. Edit. I also have recordings of my sister-in-law crying about the things her mom has said to her. I didn't know my husband recorded her when he initially went in her room to check on her, contemplating on sending them to the, her therapist, but that'll be a discussion for when he and I are home. I think in instances like this, there has to be either a family talk that needs to occur or some serious budgeting needs to take place in order for the two of you to be able to move out and live on your own. Is it possible for you to get a new job, OP? Either way, this environment is toxic and I think getting out might be the only reprieve. Part two. I'm warning y'all, now this involves guns, violence, and death. I have a horrible update about my in-laws. I'm going to have to get the police involved in the next few months. I'm going to press charges against their youngest son, 18. My brother-in-law is the result of the worst kind of parenting you could imagine. This guy is about 5 foot 8, has a history of hurting animals, and has been expelled from multiple schools, has smashed cars on purpose, phones, steals, and is obviously not mentally well, but actually has common sense and can think for himself. He just chooses these evil things because he is this self-centered. He is one of the laziest people I have met. He is mother made over. He might be more manipulative than her to some extent. 
some context about him that I have witnesses for and I will be telling the cops. He has slammed a kitten's body to the floor in a fit of rage because it was feral and didn't want to play with him. And then he smiled about it, screaming and bleeding out. In my state, that is a felony. My husband had to be the one to put it down. That kitten had to have been only a month old at most. Yet his mom and dad refused to call the cops and convinced and manipulated everyone else not to too. Last night, my husband, 20, and I, 20, were talking to sister-in-law, 14, about us all going camping to get away. We were discussing the campgrounds in pictures, and he was sitting on the couch making rude comments about us going and not taking him. We ignored him for the most part, but he was starting to talk over me, so I asked him to be quiet for a moment. He was for maybe two words and continued, and so I told him to shut up. This psychopath grabbed a huge gun that was thankfully locked off his father's office wall and pointed it at me and his little sister. He was saying, I get told to shut up a lot and all right, I'm tired of this. Keep in mind, I have actively ignored and been nice to him before this to avoid this, but obviously it doesn't matter how nice I am because even during that time, he was an a-hole to me too. He told his dad after my husband and his dad took the gun from him that it was because I was bullying him. I actually held him accountable and told him to shut up and that is effing bullying? My father-in-law, 50, then came into the kitchen and told me, you shouldn't have said that to him because now look at him. Worst part is he works on the safety committee at his job. Like what? So anyways, as soon as my husband and I move out, I'm calling the cops. I can't do it while we are here because there's no telling what his parents will do. Their daughter has other stable families she can live with that live in the same town. But right now, I feel so dumb. I feel so unsafe and just so tired. My husband feels the same. My mother-in-law and father-in-law have defended his felonies and deranged behavior for too long, and it's putting their daughter and themselves at risk. Mark my words, I'm having him arrested and I'm putting my sister-in-law in a better situation because she should not feel suicidal because of her parents and brother being unstable. Yeah, I'm not sure why you would want to remain in an environment like that. I would be doing whatever I could to be getting out of that place with my partner. Part 3. Hi y'all, so I have some better news. Not only have my husband and I been recording everything, but her therapist got law involved. My plan worked. The HR just came to the house about an hour ago and wants to schedule interviews with everyone. I'm personally very happy about the progress. I'm not happy about how my mother-in-law and father-in-law handled it though. They really messed up big time. One, they blamed my sister-in-law for everything and she got in trouble. Like what? Two, they got mad at brother-in-law, but not as mad as they were with sister-in-law. Three, to put the cherry on top, they told the DHR lady that came by about a different instance that happened with brother-in-law. She told her therapist about what happened last Wednesday, today, and they got law involved the same day. That's how serious everyone is taking this, as they should. Mother-in-law and father-in-law's argument is that the firearm is locked and unloaded, so he can't hurt anyone. But my question is, what if it weren't? I'm mad that it's taken this for them to have even the slightest reaction to their son's actions. My husband and I are both worried what will happen next. Apparently, when law has gotten involved before, they've claimed brother-in-law is extremely mentally ill and he was brought out of the hospital that same night. I don't deny he is mentally ill, but brother-in-law has some common sense and knows he messed up badly. Also, we have recordings of everyone confessing to brother-in-law doing this, so we have enough evidence. The DHR lady said that it was neglectful on my mother-in-law and father-in-law's part and that they don't feel sister-in-law is safe here. My husband and I are trying to figure out a living situation right now. I'm more shocked that my mother-in-law has no idea about what brother-in-law did with that weapon. Like, she has no clue. That's how bad communication is in this household. I cannot stand my mother-in-law defending her psychotic son. This has gotten ridiculous and I'm done backing down. I'm done with everything being manipulated by my mother-in-law, father-in-law, and brother-in-law. We three will be telling the law everything. Any questions, I'll answer. Thank you everyone who has been helpful and keeping us in your thoughts and prayers. I truly appreciate it. I'll update as soon as I hear more. Part 4. Hi y'all. I have a small update. It's a good one and a bad one. A month ago, my father-in-law bought brother-in-law a car. I couldn't tell you why. This is one of the dumbest decisions ever. But he ended up wrapping it around a tree literally three weeks exactly after he got that car. He pulled the handbrake in the car all because he wanted to. And I wish I was kidding when I say this. Tokyo Drift on his way to work. He did this on a two-way street where the speed limit is 45 and he was doing 75. He miraculously had no injuries, like not even a scratch. There were neighbors outside, a dog, and farmers on equipment. He easily could have killed someone, so my father-in-law finally decided to disown him. He has completely given up. 
He's allowing him to save enough money to get an apartment and kicking him out of the family. What I'm upset about though, is the fact that my mother-in-law has been defending him. The other day, he started to get mouthy with me and threaten me, while my mother-in-law sat there and blamed me for him randomly coming at me. So I tore into her and him, because quite frankly, I've had it. He was sobbing, she was sobbing. I've never seen this guy cry. I made him and his mom feel like the worst people ever. Neither of them have messed with me or anyone since. I made sure he knew that I don't care about him or what I have to do to him if he ever tries to hurt me or his family. During Easter, I was asked to make ribs because everyone likes my cooking. No one will eat my mother-in-law's cooking or baking. She's just not good at it. I've tried to help this woman, but she is just that hard-headed. Anyways, she is livid at me because I bought four slabs of ribs and all of them were eaten, but her salad was not touched. But she mainly made the biggest deal about her friend not even touching the salad. She was so upset and vindictive that she decided to take her anger out by trying to get her friend's husband to flirt back with her. She literally, in front of her whole family, was rubbing all on his chest and back and kissing his face. She did everything she could but kiss him on the lips. I'm not kidding. Needless to say, she has no friends now. She literally tried to get her friend's man to cheat with her because everyone ate my ribs and cheese biscuits and no one ate her salad. Oh, and how do I know this? She told my husband all of that. She admitted it to him. So yeah, that's fun. Also, another really good news, I have recently taken a teaching position, and I'm loving it. This job is helping me move in the direction I want with my life, so I'm super excited. And yes, we are still moving out. We are super close to our goal and are very ready to leave when we can pay what we need. Thank you all for the kind words. I'll make sure to keep y'all updated. Thank goodness you've taken on a job. This will be extremely helpful. One step closer to getting out of there. Part five. So my brother-in-law, 18 male, finally went to jail. He is charged with domestic assault and a class C misdemeanor. He broke the windshield to my father-in-law's truck with a bike. He threw it on there trying to hit my husband. Oh, how did this crap show start you ask? Because he brought garbage to the house and made a mess in the garage. So his mom asked him to clean it up. My husband restrained brother-in-law, but he kept trying to bite my husband. So I pulled him by his hair, pulled some of it out by accident and punched him in his face. As for the domestic assault, he kicked my sister-in-law, 14. Now remember, they have a DHR case open on him. He kept screaming that he was going to kill everyone. We beat the living crap out of this kid. We had to. If not, he was going to run off and probably kill someone like he said he wanted to. But he is finally going to jail. He's at the hospital for the next 12 hours on suicide watch and he will go to jail right after. He kept saying that he wanted to die and slamming his head on the driveway while in handcuffs. So that's why he's under suicide watch. My father-in-law is pressing charges. Now, how does this correlate into my mother-in-law? She tried to defend him. This guy physically assaulted her daughter and made death threats and she is screaming, my poor baby, in her brother-in-law's name. What the F? So with that being said, I went off on her with my husband. She then tried to turn all of this onto my sister-in-law. This woman is crazy. She got mad that sister-in-law didn't lie to the cop about him hurting her. So. With that being said, the mama bear in me came out and screamed at her. I was so mad. She tried to tell her that her suicide attempt was worse than her adult son trying to kill everyone. So with that being said, we are finally safe. I will keep everyone updated and I'm more than willing to answer any questions and comments. By the way, all of this literally just happened. Edit. Also, I do have it on video. I have all of it on video. I'm giving it to the cops tomorrow. Edit too. By the way, I just looked back at the video. He was being racist for literally no reason, like yelling the N-word for no reason. Like what? Here are some other updates from the OP in the comments section. Y'all, we just got a call from the hospital. They said he is no longer suicidal, and if we want him to come out, he can. I cannot believe this BS. He literally just went in not even three hours ago, and he is supposedly on suicide watch, but the second he tells them he was lying about wanting to commit suicide, they want to send him back. I am so livid I cannot stand it. And no, we aren't picking him up. We are not safe and he will absolutely do something again. Never in my life have I heard of this crap. At 7.32 PM, we were literally having to restrain him from killing someone and now he is just as good to come home? Also, he admitted to every one of his past crimes in front of the officers, proving himself that he has a history. It's on the body cam footage. This is ridiculous. Another update from OP. Hey y'all, so my husband and I, by the way, y'all can call me Kate. At this point, y'all might as well know my name instead of just OP, are now living with my parents. They've cleared out a room for us, but sadly his sister won't be able to come with us. But she is staying with her aunt and uncle. Mother-in-law refuses to believe brother-in-law did anything wrong. Father-in-law doesn't care. 
so DHR is involved and the police are informed. Everyone is safe at the moment. I'll update soon. Another update from OP. So good and bad news. Bad news is at 9.30 a.m. we found out mother-in-law discharged brother-in-law from the hospital and has brought him home. Now, she has left him alone there with a bunch of cats and dogs. He has a history of abuse with both. So with that being said, no one is going home. My husband and I both are taking my sister-in-law out of the house and staying with my parents. The better news is that we have taken her out of the situation. Y'all, I'm so dang tired of my in-laws. They aren't doing anything to stop this or even help brother-in-law. So you know what? I'm doing it. I called DHR and forced their hand. I called the county sheriff and he now has a warrant for his arrest. She is not allowed to go home now. And let me just tell you, they are mad as hell that I have pictures and video proof that he intended to do this. And some current justice for those of you who wanted us to kick his butt, we did, in self-defense. The cops congratulated us. He has bald spots, cuts, and bruises because of me having to keep him from biting and knocking out my husband. I'll keep y'all updated. Thank you all so much for the support. You have no idea how helpful y'all have been. OP has a small update on how we're doing. My husband seems to be pulling himself together slowly and getting better very slowly. I, on the other hand, and am still having a really hard time with what his mom has said about me. 98% of the people in our life are constantly talking about the poor mom. You'll never know what it's like for mother-in-law. Mother and father-in-law are doing the best they can. Don't be such a witch. Mother-in-law is going through a lot. Y'all, I literally had to protect her own child from her own son. I had to do things I really didn't want to have to do in order to make sure everyone was and is safe. I was in fear for my life and everyone else's lives. So why am I being thrown under the bus? First, sister-in-law is thrown under the bus and now me? I hate this. I just wanted to protect my husband and sister-in-law. I even wanted to protect my mother-in-law. I just don't get it. I didn't do anything unnecessary in this situation. One more update from the OP. A better update. Hi, y'all. First and foremost, I want to say thank you for everyone's advice and encouragement. Without a lot of y'all's help, I wouldn't have even thought about DHR. This has been so hectic for my sister-in-law, husband, and I. However, I'm so thankful we've had so many people to help us along the way. Anyways, we've been working through all of this as a unit. We've decided that as soon as sister-in-law is out of the house officially, we will cut all of them off. As of right now, only mother-in-law and brother-in-law are completely cut off. We are keeping in contact with father-in-law as of right now, only because of sister-in-law and the fact that he will do more than mother-in-law. Brother-in-law has just now, after years of this crap, gone to two psychiatric appointments. For my husband and I, this doesn't change crap. Mother-in-law and father-in-law should have gotten him help the second he started making unalive threats and trying to act on them and severe property damage, as well as a myriad of other awful things he's done. So yeah, no, they are never meeting my family or our future family. And thankfully, we are taking the right steps to move out on our own officially, and it's moving very quickly. Ah, goodness. I'm so glad your sister-in-law has someone looking out for her. She needs you now more than ever. It's unfortunate, however, that this responsibility lies on your shoulders and not on her own parents. Her own parents should want to protect her against harm. Your brother-in-law has been enabled his whole life, and your in-laws seem completely blind to it. Update. I don't know what's happening with my life, and I feel like I'm going crazy. I'm writing this at 3.22 a.m. on a Thursday. I have had the roughest three years of my life, a lot of good in 2021 and 2023, but also an insane amount of bad. Like I don't know what on earth is going on with my life. I need to know if I'm going crazy or not. I've posted about my in-laws on Reddit and how they made my and my husband's life miserable, but there's more to it, to, I feel. Of course I know that this depression I've fallen into is mostly because of the horrific trauma they have caused for my husband and I, but I know it's not just them. I've had the worst luck with jobs and relationships before my in-laws. It's always made me feel like a failure, I always have to quit either for my safety or sanity. It makes me feel like a bum, especially when I tell people what's gone on in my life and I've looked at like I'm crazy and I don't understand why like I'm truly doing the best I can. I seriously don't get why my life is going crazy. I'm exercising, eating right, working hard at a job I love, coming home to the man I love. I'm truly minding my own business and suddenly bad luck hits in the worst way. And I don't mean like, oh, you just had a bad day. I'm talking about I've dealt with the worst crap I've ever dealt with in a month. Everyone is saying all of this isn't my fault and that I need to stop trying to find a way to blame myself. But if everything goes so wrong for me so often, then how is it not my fault if it's going wrong so often? I've always dealt with depression, but I'm scared I'm getting more serious too quickly, especially since everything in my body starts to ache when it hits me hard. I haven't felt that in years. I did not miss this feeling. I've never been more thankful for my husband and family because they're really trying to help me through this. 
I feel so unworthy of all of them. I feel so stressed all the time for my job, in-laws, payments, etc. We're talking, I'm having to see a doctor about how my stress has affected my body and weight because I've gained so much so fast from the sudden overload of stress and trauma. I start therapy next week, thankfully, so hopefully that will help. I'm mainly in here to ask if anyone is or has struggled with anything similar to put some sanity back into my noggin. Thank you. We've got one opinion from the community. Helios says, I'm glad you have a partner that helps you and who is there for you. What gets me through the day is appreciation. I give thanks every day. It's almost like a ritual. I say thank you for my loving wife having a healthy kid. I give thanks for having a job for being able to do physical things in my health. There is so much it's actually too much to mention. But the point is I try to be thankful for the things I do have even if there is bad things going on in my life. Easier said than done. People are programmed to look for danger, but it's possible. Good luck, OP. I'm so sorry you're going through this, OP. You're not going crazy, nor are you crazy. Your feelings are absolutely valid. You've been through so much. That's not easy to process or get over. There's a lot of trauma there. You should be so proud of yourself for all that you've been through and all that you've accomplished. Therapy is an excellent step in the right direction towards taking care of yourself, your mental health, and practicing self-love. The best thing we can do is advocate for ourselves. Continue to do this and be patient with yourself. Healing takes time. You have the tools and you have the support you need to get through this. You are not alone. Do you have some similar experiences? Share them with us in the comments below. We're all in this together. Thank you for joining us today on our lounge. Before you go, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you have something you want to say regarding today's content, share that with us in the comments below.